welcome back to um, another edition of Coffee Collaboration from Seattle Coffee Gear with me, your host, Clementine. Thanks for coming back. So today we're going to be making Turkish coffee. Uh, this is actually a suggestion from lots of commenters. Raise your hand if you're one of those commenters. Just kidding, I can't see you. It's a really interesting recipe um, that can be made with just Turkish coffee and water alone, and that in itself will still produce a different kind of coffee than you can make um, any other way, really. So it's deeply rooted in history and in culture, not just in Turkey, but you can find it in Armenia, Greece, Egypt, um, lots of different places. So what you're gonna need in order to create this concoction is, it's pretty simple, you're gonna need a chazba, which is this little guy here. Um, so people also refer to it as an e-brick, but this is a chazba because of uh, the fact that it's made of copper. Copper is a more porous material, it conducts heat better, this guy's a chazba. Okay. Um, I'd recommend also having a Turkish coffee grinder on hand. Um, so this guy uh, is different from m most of the other grinders that we sell because um, most electric grinders, if you try and grind to a Turkish level, they'll actually clog. So this guy is kind of Mr. Old Reliable. Um, It'll help you make your Turkish coffee uh, 100%. Okay, so uh, materials, you're gonna need a chazva, you're gonna need a Turkish coffee grinder, and you're gonna need a heating source. Interestingly, um, the heating, the traditional heating source that people have used in the past has actually been just hot sand. So, and there's some really cool videos if you wanna have a look and see how that's done online. Um, right, so chazva, heating source, Turkish coffee grinder, and a little tiny spoon, and then you're good. Um, the ingredients are equally pretty simple. You're gonna need your t Turkish coffee. You're gonna need water. In this case, we're gonna be using about two ounces. We're gonna grind through about seven grams of coffee, and we're gonna use about a teaspoon of sugar. So sugar is optional. Um, there's actually four different names for the coffee depending on how much sugar you use. Um, in our case, we're using one teaspoon. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's get ourselves going. In order to start us off, I'm gonna go ahead and start grinding our coffee. It's kind of tricky. You just kinda have to twirl it until it's ready. Okay, so let's have a look inside and see how much we've accomplished. Okay, not a lot. Keep going. If you like to make Turkish coffee, you could, you could um, wake yourself up in the morning, like instead of doing an exercise routine, or in addition to, this could be like for your arms. I'd recommend uh, using gloves too. So you can see here we've got about seven grams of coffee, Turkish ground. The thing that's unique about Turkish ground coffee is that if you feel it, it literally feels like a powder. The reason you want it to be so fine, in, from what I gather, is that you can combine other spices like cardamom, nutmeg, clove, and cinnamon, and then the spices will just kind of mesh together with your coffee beans. So it's an interesting process. Um, now we're ready though. So we've got our water, we've got our sugar, and we've got our coffee. And that's literally all you need. So I'm gonna start brewing up a cup. Here we go. Step number one, turn up the heat. Turn up your heat to low. Keep your temperature low. You want a low temperature. Um, 
And so a lot of people are tempted to start by heating up the water. You know, generally when you're making coffee, I think um, like a pour over style or Chemex, you want your coffee water to be hot. Not in this case, guys. We're starting off cold because this is Turkish coffee and it's different than other types. So, um, cold water. Number one, add your cold water to your chasba. Like so. Okay. Number two, we're going to add in about a teaspoon of sugar in our case. You don't have to, again. Uh, as one commenter put it, um, never trust a man who puts sugar in his coffee. So take that with a grain of salt, maybe. Okay, got our sugar in there, um, about a teaspoon in there. Interesting thing, we are actually doing kind of a stratification method. Um, we're putting our sugar in first on purpose because we're not going to mix it up very much. The sugar, um, it's been said, can actually caramelize if you leave it on the bottom of the chasba to heat up. Um, we're not going to mix it. Then we're going to add in our seven grams of Turkish ground coffee. Okay. We do want everything to be submerged, so I'm going to give it a little tap on the countertop. Um, this is actually a really gentle process, so you want, it's a delicate process, you want to be gentle with it. About a lot of taps. And again, we've got our heat on low. All the ingredients are combined. We're going to jump into the actual brewing process. The complexities are not over yet. In fact, they're just beginning. So, so, so stay with me. All right. Okay, our chasva is on the heating source. This process is kind of where it all begins. So what we're making here is we are establishing foam. Uh, the foam is where it's at. Like if you don't have foam in your Turkish coffee, you should really just throw it out the window and start over because we did it wrong. Pretty much don't stir it while it's in here. Um, this really is a delicate process, a lot sort of akin to pour over method in that you have to be present throughout the full process in order for it to turn out well. So right now, we're allowing the foam to thicken and develop therein. Um, rather than bringing it straight up to a boil where all of the contents would burst out through the top, um, we want to keep them integrated inside. So don't bring it to a boil, number one, ever. You're using cold water and you're not bringing it to a boil. All right, so uh, right now we're really just monitoring the temperature. We want to make sure that it doesn't get up to the boiling level because we don't want the coffee to burn. So um, I can see that there are some bubbles. It's sort of simmering. Bubbles are forming on the outer edge of the chasva. Um, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and collect the foam that has formed on the top. And I'm going to put it in my little, in my little finchan, which this isn't really a finchan, but the, the walls of the cup are flat, just kind of the way they're supposed to be designed. Okay, so really, really delicately, you just want to collect that foam that you created. See if it can be really good. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to heat it up two more times, collect as much foam as we can, and then I'll show you the next step. So we'll be right back. So there is definitely foam in there. Uh, could there be more foam? Yes, definitely. Some people will actually drink this coffee just for the foam. Um, pretty small amount. You can't really drink only the foam in this case. Uh, but it is there. 
um, the la or the second to last step actually is to pour in the rest of your coffee. And you want to do it really slow so that you don't break the foam you created. Do that slow, gentle pour. It's so dark, like ridiculously dark, like could be mistaken for dark chocolate dark. And you really do not get that if you just skip ahead to boil it and make it hot. You can make any coffee hot. This is Turkish coffee, so it's different. Okay, so the final step in this process is you actually are just gonna, you're gonna leave, you're gonna give it some space. You're gonna leave it alone. You're gonna leave it to develop into the beautiful, independent woman that she is. So just give it some space, some time. I'd say about two minutes. So we'll be right back. All right, so ideally, you'd have a layer of foam on top. Um, some people are able to develop enough foam that you kind of create a creme, creme brulee effect um, where you almost have to tap the top of it to break into the coffee. Um, most people uh, will say that the coffee is ready when it starts to um, break open. Uh, <laughs> ours is it's pretty much opened as it is. So I wouldn't call it garbage, but <laughs> let's see how it tastes. Whoa. <laughs> it's really interesting. <laughs> Definitely doesn't taste like any coffee I've ever had. Hmm. You can kind of chew on it. Wow. Wow. That's really interesting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Coffee you can chew on. Okay. Okay, so it's, when I say interest, okay, um, it's, it's, it's really unique. I would definitely make this at home. I would make it for friends and um, it's so unique that I can see how like nothing could compare. Like if you had, if you, if you went to just regular coffee shops and you asked for a coffee and you got, and you were used to drinking this, nothing would compare. So, um, and again, that was pretty much water, sugar, and coffee, but the brew method makes all the difference. All right. Um, well, thanks for, thanks for sharing this cup of coffee with me. Super enjoyed having you here and thanks for the idea, everyone. Um, I love learning how to make this. It's really interesting. Be sure and click that like button if you liked hanging out. Um, and if you didn't, Feel free to vent about it in the comment section. Tell us, tell us about your feelings. Um, also, if you have any ideas for future coffee collaborations, we'd love to hear about them. Any idea you have, I bet we can make it work. So toss them out there. And then also subscribe if you want to stay on the up and up with all of our crazy content. Loved having you here. Come back again. Stay tuned for future coffee collaborations with me, Clementine. And have a fantastic day. Oh. A lot of taps.